Hey everyone, this week we are going to be working on how, how to analyze an argument. If you haven't already, make sure that you've already watched the lessons about determining fact from opinion and how to identify what an argument is because we're going to need those skills to go forward a little bit later today. So we're going to go ahead and get started. The GED skill that we're going to be practicing today is evaluating relevant and sufficiency of evidence offered in support of a claim. So like we had talked about with our last lessons, we're working on building up to this skill. So to help us build up to this skill, we're gonna to work today on breaking down an argument, and we're gonna work on identifying the argument, reasons, and evidence inside of a piece of writing. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we wanna talk about is that there are three pieces to every argument. And in order to be able to analyze an argument, we need to first be able to identify all the parts of the argument. So the parts that we're gonna be working with are the argument, which we've talked a little bit about already, the reasons to support an argument, and the evidence. So we are gonna be working with all three of these pieces today, and we're gonna work on identifying them, defining them, and we're gonna practice it together. So the first step that we're going to talk about is identifying what an argument is. So we talked a little bit about argument last week. We talked about the fact that you can have an argument in writing and that really the goal of an argument is to persuade or convince someone. We also talked about the idea that for every argument you have, you also have a counter argument. And that counter argument is just the opposite of an argument. So if an argument you are for something, the counter argument means you're against something. The key to remember here that we had talked about with argument is that argument is a statement of opinion. And we know an opinion is something that can't be proven. So we're gonna add to that definition today of argument and we're gonna say that an author's argument is his or her position on the issues being discussed. And you can either be for an issue or you can be against something. So you are creating an argument and a counter argument. So I came up with a couple of examples here just to share with you just to kind of get us back in the idea of argument. So my first example is that argument should be mandatory. I know that when I see that word should, that's a good indicator that I'm dealing with an opinion. And since arguments are just statements of opinion, I think that's a really good example of an argument. I can also say that everyone must greet others without shaking hands. That's an argument, something I believe. My last example of an argument is the sentence, I am the best candidate for the position. So where might we see this sentence? I'm thinking that I might see it with something that's job related. So maybe I'm going for a job interview and I would say this sentence. Maybe I am writing my resume or maybe I am working on my cover letter. Anytime we are looking at applying for a new job or a position, really, we're creating an argument. We're arguing that we should be hired over someone else. And by saying a sentence like, I am the best candidate for this position, that's a statement of my argument. So now that we've kind of refreshed what an argument is, let's talk about how we find an argument inside of a piece of writing. So in order to find the argument, there are a couple of things we want to do. The first thing is to look at the title. Now, we've talked about using the title before because we know that the title states the main idea. So it helps us understand what the main idea of a piece of writing is going to be. What is the whole thing going to be about? When we deal with an argument, we can also add in that title is also going to indicate to us the writer's purpose for writing or their position on a topic. We wanna keep in mind that sometimes a writer might state the argument in the title and they may not state it anywhere else. 
So sometimes when we read things that are long, we have a tendency to jump right into the reading. And it's really important that we take the time to read the title first. Now, if there is no title, where we want to look next is at the introduction. And the introduction paragraph is always going to be the first paragraph that you're given. And we're going to look for the topic sentence. We're going to look for the big idea in that first paragraph. It is really important to have your argument front and center. It should be one of the first things that an, an, an audience reads. So we're gonna look for that introduction paragraph to find argument if we can't find it in main idea, because that's where it should be. Now, if you can't find your argument in the introduction, we're gonna look at the conclusion. And that conclusion is the last paragraph. So when the last paragraph, when we use conclusions, we're looking to kind of summarize everything to wrap everything up. So that might be the other place that we would see an argument. So let's do a little bit of practice for identifying an argument. Okay, so I've got a reading that we're gonna to do together that has the title, Chocolate Milk Nutrition Information. We are gonna work on identifying the argument. So we need to find out what the argument is. Now, how do we find that argument? We just said that the first place we want to look for argument is in the title. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my title first. So my title here says that this is chocolate milk's nutrition information. Okay, so I want to think to myself, has this given me the argument? Is there a statement of argument here? I know that when I read chocolate milk nutrition information, that I know that this is all about chocolate milk. So my argument has something to do with chocolate milk. <clears throat> so when I come back to that title, I don't really get the feeling that it's making an argument about chocolate milk yet. It's just gonna be telling me about the chocolate milk nutrition information. So I don't really have a complete statement of argument because I don't know what the author believes yet. I just know that they're gonna be talking about chocolate milk. So I figured out what the topic is, but not what their argument is. So in order to find their argument, if it isn't in the title, then we're gonna to go to our introduction paragraph, which we said is our first paragraph. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here. And we're gonna look at our first paragraph here together. We're gonna to read it together and see if we can come up with what the argument is. What does this author believe about chocolate milk? All right, so let's start. While you might not think of chocolate milk as your healthiest beverage option, it has a place in a balanced diet. Drinking chocolate milk after your workouts might offer benefits, as Dr. John Ivey, PhD, explains in an interview with the University of Texas, that drinking chocolate milk as a post-workout snack helps you hold on to muscle and burn fat. Chocolate milk also offers other health benefits thanks to its nutrient content, but drink it in moderation because it contains added sugar. Okay. So we were right in our assumption that this was all about chocolate milk, but we want to think to ourselves now, okay, what is this author arguing? What are they trying to tell me about chocolate milk? After reading this first paragraph, I think that this author is pro chocolate milk. They are for chocolate milk. So for my argument section, I'm going to add in that chocolate milk is good. That's my author's idea. Just really simply put, I'm not looking to make anything like really big yet. Chocolate milk is good. That's what my author is saying. So I wanna look inside of this paragraph and see if I can find a sentence that states that argument. We're gonna be looking for a stated argument. So I want you to take a minute and look through this paragraph. Do you see any sentences that state the idea that chocolate milk is good for us. When I read through my sentences, I see that there are a couple of ideas that talk about chocolate milk being good for us. Things like drinking it as a post-workout snack to help you, things like having a place in a balanced diet. But when I read through this, there's one part of a sentence that really stands out to me. And it's this part right here where we say chocolate milk also offers other health benefits thanks to its nutrient content. I really like this sentence because for me, it helps state 
the ideas that we had talked about at the beginning. So from our title, we learned that this was all about the nutrition information in chocolate milk, and our argument was that chocolate milk is good. I really think that what's highlighted in yellow here is a really good statement of the Arthur's argument, what they believe to be true. But I also think that this paragraph contains a counter argument. So we wanna remember that every argument has a counter argument, an opposite side. So what might be the opposite side of chocolate milk having health benefits? When I continue reading that sentence, I look and see something else. I see that it says, but drink it in moderation because it contains added sugar. I know that when I use that word but, but is a contrast word. And I know that when things are contrasting, I'm looking at the opposites. So I think that what is written in green here, what is highlighted with our green color, is our counter argument. Remember that sometimes we can do a piece of reading where we have the argument and counter argument in the exact same piece of writing. Sometimes we may have two pieces of writing, one with the argument, one with the counter argument. Our chocolate milk example here happens to be a good example of a piece of writing that has both the argument and counter argument inside of it. Since we were able to highlight both the counter argument and the argument, we can say, that this piece of writing has a stated argument. We know that when something is stated, we're able to point at it inside of a text to underline it and say specifically, this is the argument. Awesome. So we've just found the argument in this piece of writing. So we're going to move on to our next section of identification. So after we identify the argument, we want to next look for reasons. So what is a reason in a piece of writing? We are going to say that reasons are our general ideas about why or how an argument is right, true, or deserving of support. So a really nice short way to think about this is that reasons show why I'm right. We know that when we are making an argument, it's really important for us to use good support. One type of support is a reason. And the goal of a reason is just to explain to the person who is reading why your argument is the best argument, why it is the correct argument, why it is the right argument. What we want to keep in mind is that reasons are not very specific. They are general ideas meaning that they are big ideas. They're not the proof yet. They're not into my statistics or my facts. They're my big ideas. If you're reading something long, in general, you're gonna see between three and four reasons inside of an argument. If you're reading something short, like maybe it's only one paragraph, you're probably not gonna find three to four reasons. But we wanna keep in mind that that's usually a pretty standard number when we're looking at a longer argument. So I came up with a couple of examples based off of the arguments I had made on earlier slides. So one of the arguments that I had made was that everyone should recycle because it reduces the amount of trash in landfills. So my argument was that everyone should recycle. This was my argument right here. I want to know why. Why am I right? Why should everyone recycle? recycle? My answer is because it reduces the amount of trash in landfills. This is my reason that I believe I'm right. I believe that we should recycle because it reduces the amount of trash in landfills. Re keep in mind that this is a big idea, right? It's pretty general. I haven't given you any proof yet. This is just why I think I'm right. One of the other arguments that we had made on an earlier slide was that I am the best candidate for this position. Well, why? What reasons can I give to show why I'm the best candidate for this position? I might state the sentence that I'm the best candidate for this job because I am very 
organized. That would be a good reason to hire me for that position. I've not given you any specifics yet. I've not given you anything that might prove that I'm uh, organized or the best candidate for this position, but I'm just trying to give you examples of why I think I'm right. So now that we have an idea about what a reason is, how do we go about finding it? Generally, we wanna be looking in your body paragraphs. And when we look at something that's longer, each reason is gonna get its own body paragraph. So for example, if you're reading a piece of writing that has uh, four body paragraphs, there's usually gonna be four different reasons. So in order to find a reason, we wanna look for the main idea sentence of each body paragraph. Now we've talked about main idea before. We know main idea is the most important information. It talks about what the whole thing is about. We also called it the topic. We know that we can use the title as a way to help us find main idea. And I always like to say, remember that million dollar question when you ask for main idea. Is this what the whole paragraph is about? If it doesn't apply to the whole paragraph, it's not your main idea. So one thing that we haven't mentioned before is that sometimes articles use headings or subheadings as a way to guide you as you read. These can also be really helpful in finding a reason. And our chocolate milk reading actually has a couple of headings and we'll kind of look at what that looks like. So let's head back to that chocolate milk reading and see what we can find for the author's reasons to support their argument. Okay, so we know what the argument is, right? Our author is arguing that chocolate milk is good for us, but in counter argument that we should drink it in moderation because it has a lot of sugar. So we're gonna look at two body paragraphs and we're gonna break our two body paragraphs down. So my first body paragraph here has the heading of the nutrition basics. So I know that this is a heading because it is separated by itself. It stands above the first paragraph and it's bold. So it's a little bit bigger and bolder than the text that's below it. Headings just do a good job of explaining to us what information is gonna come below. And just like with titles, they're a good way for us to predict what we're gonna be reading about. Our second heading is called Bone Building Minerals. So we're gonna do a little predicting. Based off of what we see in the headings, what can we predict these paragraphs are gonna be about? I want you to take a minute and think about what, just, what these headings are trying to tell us. On your sheet, go ahead and write down your guess for what you think you're gonna see in the paragraph from the Nutrition Basics, and your guess about what you think we're gonna see in the paragraph from Bone Building Minerals. Pause the video here so you have enough time to write your answer. All right, so let's first make a prediction about nutrition basics. So I kind of think that since this is all about chocolate milk, I think that this paragraph is going to be talking to me about the good nutrition in, in chocolate milk, since that's what the author is arguing. So I'm gonna write that down. That's my prediction for what I think I'm going to encounter in this paragraph. Let's do the same thing for the second paragraph. When I see bone building minerals, what kind of argument or reason, what kind of reason could be given to support the argument? Well, since this is all about chocolate milk, I think that this paragraph might be talking about how chocolate milk is good for my bones. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. So remember, these are just predictions, but we're using them to get an idea before we start reading. So now that we've made predictions about what these paragraphs do, I want to think about, does this support the argument? So if my argument is that chocolate milk is good for me, would these help? Good nutrition in chocolate milk and the good things that chocolate milk does for my bones. Yeah, I think that could help the argument quite a bit. So let's see if those really are what the paragraphs are telling us. 
Okay, so we're going to start with the nutrition basics. Each cup of chocolate milk boosts your energy intake by 190 calories and provides roughly 10% of your daily caloric intake in the 2000 calorie diet. Most of the chocolate milk's calories come from its 4.8 grams of fat and 30 grams of carbohydrates, which provide energy to help you get through the day. Chocolate milk also offers 7.5 grams of protein per serving. This protein helps your body maintain and repair muscle tissue, and it also supports hormone and enzyme production. Getting enough protein in your diet also nourishes other tissues, including your eyes and skin. All right, that's a pretty good paragraph right there. So the first thing I want to ask is, was my prediction correct? Is this paragraph talking about how we have good nutrition in chocolate milk? I definitely think so. I think our prediction was correct. This paragraph is talking to me all about nutrition. I learned things that, like how many calories it has. I learned about how much fat and how much carbohydrates I get from it in those calories. I learned about how much protein I take in, and I also learned what protein does for my body. So I wanna know, is there a stated reason? Meaning, can I underline or highlight something in this reading, in this paragraph, that states the idea that we had predicted, that good nutrition in chocolate milk, that's the reason I'm looking for. Is there one sentence in this paragraph? Pause the video read through these sentences and see if you can find a stated reason. All right, so when I look at this paragraph here under the nutrition basics, I see a lot of good information, things like calorie intake, um, how much fat and carbohydrates and protein I get from milk, from chocolate milk, but I really don't think I can find one specific sentence that states that this is all about the total nutrition because each sentence talks about its own thing. One talks about calories, one talks about protein, one talks about fat and carbs. I don't think I can underline any of these ideas and still find the reason. So this paragraph has what we call an implied reason. Now we've talked about that word implied before. Implied meaning means that the information isn't stated in the text, but we can still understand it. So implying is what we do when we read between the lines. We're still able to understand the information. We're just not really able to underline anything. We were able to underline our argument up inside of our first paragraph, which made us have a stated argument. But really, there's nothing that I can underline inside of this paragraph here that states what the reason is. And that's why I'm going to remove those underlines, because those aren't really reasons. They don't really help tell me that this whole thing is about the good nutrition in chocolate milk. So let's do the same thing for our next paragraph, bone building minerals. All right, let's try it out. The minerals found in chocolate milk nourish your skeleton. Each serving of chocolate milk provides 272 milligrams of calcium, or 27% of the recommended daily intake. Calcium becomes incorporated into the mineral tissue that makes up your bones, and a calcium-rich diet fights bone-related diseases such as osteoporosis. The copper found in chocolate milk helps to make collagen, a protein found in abundance in bone tissue. Drinking a cup of chocolate milk boosts your copper intake by 188 micrograms, or 21% of the recommended daily intake. Okay, so were we correct? Was our prediction that this is all about how chocolate milk is good for my bones correct? Yeah, I definitely think so. Everything in this paragraph talks about the good stuff that chocolate milk does for my bones. So I think we were right in our prediction. So we're going to ask the same question we asked from our first paragraph up here. Is there a sentence that states the reason? Can I highlight one sentence in this paragraph that states the reason that we had predicted? Pause the video here, read through each sentence, and see if there's one sentence that you think best states the reason.
Okay, so when I'm looking back at this paragraph about bone building minerals, I definitely think there is one sentence that I can use. And I think it's this first sentence here. When we say that the minerals found in chocolate milk nourish your skeleton, that's just another way of saying the sentence that we had predicted. It's just another way of saying this idea right here, that chocolate milk is good for my bones. It really says the same thing. So if our first paragraph had an implied reason, our second paragraph has a stated reason because we are able to underline it inside of the text. We're able to find it. So keep in mind that imply and imply are words that we are gonna see when we test. So we've been able to read so far and find the argument and the reasons in support of that argument. So our argument was that we should drink chocolate milk and I we wanna think why, why should we drink chocolate milk? Well, we came up with two reasons. Reason one is that it is good for my nutrition to drink chocolate milk. And reason two is that chocolate milk is good for my bones. Those are the two reasons that the author gives here to support their argument. So now it's time to look at the last part of an argument. So the last part of the argument is evidence. And we've talked about evidence in the past. We know that when we talk about evidence, we are talking about proof. You have to have the proof. So we had mentioned that when we watch any type of like mysteries on TV, crime shows, murder mysteries, you got to have the evidence, right? If a cop thinks that the butler committed the crime, they can't just say that, they have to prove it. You have to give the evidence. The same thing is true with every argument you make. Each reason that an author gives needs to have evidence. And evidence is used to prove that the reasons are logical and true. Really what this means is that we are proving that we have a valid argument by using evidence. So in order to have a good piece of evidence, we want to get specific. This is where we get into the nitty gritties. If a reason is general, evidence is very specific. And there are a lot of different types of evidence. We can use compare and contrast as a type of evidence. We can use cause and effect as a type of evidence. We can use statistics. So statistics just means numbers in a situation. So if you're reading numbers on a graph, if maybe you see that one in four people is left-handed, that might be an example of a statistic. Or if we say that 75% of people own cats, that's a statistic. We love statistics. That is a great type of evidence because they're easy for us to prove. They're easiest for us to find the proof of. We can also use direct quotes from experts. We also really like direct quotes from experts. That's a good type of evidence. And it's really important that they are experts, not just somebody you meet on the street. We believe what experts tell us because they are people who have been trained in their job. They have the expertise and the knowledge to explain something to you and understand what they're saying. So we wanna believe the expert over other people. Analogies are also different types of evidence. That's what we use when we compare two things to make a point. So the one that I included here as an example is from Forrest Gump, where we see that life is like a box of chocolates and you never know what you're gonna get. We're comparing two different things to help make a point. We can also use personal experience, anecdotes, uh, which are stories that are told, and examples as types of evidence as well. We also really like the example as a good type of evidence. We want to be able to prove our ideas with examples. So how do I find evidence inside of a text? So when we were reading our paragraphs, in order to find the reason, we thought of the main idea. In order to find evidence, we want to look for the supporting details in each paragraph that support those reasons. What we really want to look for is the statements that prove the reason by showing how or why. 
So if you can explain yourself with a piece of evidence, that's what we're looking for. Evidence is going to be a very specific fact or statement that explains the reason. And when it comes down to it, we really just want to make sure that you can prove it. So before we start looking for our evidence in our chocolate milk argument, we want to look for how do we know if it's good evidence? What do we do there? So there are a couple of things that we can use to decide whether or not something is good evidence. So we're going to ask a couple of questions. We would ask, is the evidence factual and relevant? We know that factual just means that it is based in fact. And that if something is relevant, it means it's on topic. So for example, if we are doing our chocolate milk reading and all of a sudden I start talking to you about soda, that's not on topic. That information is irrelevant. When something is irrelevant, it means it's not on topic. It's the exact opposite. And I know that because of that IR in front of it. That's a good way to tell me the opposite or not. It is not relevant. The second question we can ask is, does the evidence come from a reliable source? Reliable sources are things like experts. They're people that we believe because they have good information. The third way to decide if it's good evidence is to ask, is it up to date? Is it unbiased and objective? If something's up to date, it means that it's current. Keep in mind that things change over time. Science changes all the time. So we wanna make sure that we are using the most current, up-to-date information possible. We also wanna make sure that it is unbiased. On is another word that we, another prefix that we can add to the beginning of a word to tell me the opposite. It is not biased. We are not seeing personal prejudices come out. And the last thing we would ask is, is it objective? If something is objective, it means that it is not influenced by personal feelings or ideas. So we really like things that are objective. Our chocolate milk reading so far has been objective. I'm not really getting the feeling that the author is giving a lot of personal evidence or personal feelings into the reading. And the last way we can prove if it's good evidence is we can ask, is there a difference between fact and opinion? Is the author making sure that they're explaining the difference between the two and not just trying to explain their opinions as fact? So let's go ahead and put this into practice. So inside our chocolate milk argument, we've already found the argument and the reasons that support the argument. So now we're gonna look for the proof. We're gonna look for the evidence. In order for something to be a good reading or a good argument, it should have proof, it should have evidence. So we're gonna look back at our nutrition basics paragraph. What can we see here that is good proof? How can I prove that there is good nutrition in chocolate milk. Take a minute and I want you to look back over this paragraph. What stands out to you as a piece of proof? Pause the video and take a look. Okay, so when I look at this paragraph, there are some things that stand out to me that are factual and true, things that I can prove. Things like the fact that Chocolate milk boosts my energy intake by 190 calories, like 10% of my daily caloric intake. I can use the information about how much fat, carbohydrates, and protein are inside of chocolate milk. Those are good facts that support the idea that there is good nutrition in chocolate milk. I think that these are reliable facts. They're things that I can prove. They seem up to date and current. So I think that this is a really good example of good pieces of evidence. What about our second paragraph for bone building minerals? What types of facts and evidence do we see that support my reason that chocolate milk is good for my bones? Pause the video and take a look.
Okay, so what types of evidence do they give me? Well, they tell me that chocolate milk gives me a lot of calcium, which is 27% of my recommended daily intake. It explains to me what calcium does. It explains to me information about the copper. And they give me this fact down here about having it be 188 micrograms, which is 28% of my daily intake. We learn more about how calcium rich diets fight things like osteoporosis. So again, I'm seeing a lot of facts that help prove my reason. I'm seeing a lot of proof, a lot of evidence here. So in my mind, when I look at both of these paragraphs, the nutrition basics and bone building minerals, they are well written paragraphs with good evidence, good support. So, so far, this argument about chocolate milk has been great. When we zoom out a little bit, we see that we've been able to break down the argument. We've been able to find the argument itself. We've been able to find the stated information inside of the text that contained the argument. We were able to find not one, but two reasons to support the argument. And each of those reasons had a well-supported, well-thought-out paragraph to go with it. This is a good example of an objective argument. An objective argument, because it contains a lot of facts, there's no personal opinion included, and it's just well-written. For homework this evening, or whenever you get a chance to get to your homework, there are two extra paragraphs to this assignment. One that has the heading of beneficial vitamins and one that has the heading of nutritional concerns. Your job is to break down these last two paragraphs just like we did with the two above. Good luck and remember that if you need me, I am just a phone call, remind message, or email away and I will be more than happy to help. All right, everyone, good luck and I'll see you next time.